see you out there. Say, I lift my hands together. Come on, say it. Everybody in the mic, 
Lift your worship. Lift your worship in the light. Lift your worship in the light. I think sometimes, I think sometimes we forget, we forget why we were created. We were created to worship God. I, uh, I told somebody the other day, I said I was called to preach, but I was created to worship. I was called to preach, but I was created to praise God. So I'm a preach and praise God. I'm a preach and worship. You were not created to just work a job. You were created to worship. So you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to work my job, but I'm not going to let anything keep me from worshiping God, from praising God, because I wasn't created to punch a clock. I was created to worship God. I wasn't created to get rich. I was created to worship God. I was not created to own a bunch of stuff. I was created to worship God. Are there about 500 people in the room that can remember why you were created and take a moment and give God a praise right here. Take a moment and worship him right here. You got to make up in your mind that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through, don't let anything stop you from lifting your hands. Don't let anything stop you from opening your mouth. Don't let anything stop you from saying hallelujah. Don't let anything stop. Where's the worship in church at? Where's the praise in church at? Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything's going to be all right. See, the sermon today, the sermon today exposes the tactics of the enemy and what he's trying to do, but also what God is going to do. And I'm just going to remind you today that what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. Oh, I don't know if you heard me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. What the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. Now, don't say it if you don't believe it. Find somebody on the other side and say, neighbor, what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. Oh, now it almost feels like whole city. Find somebody across the room and say, neighbor, what the devil meant for evil, God will. Turn it around for your good. It's working out for your good. So, grab your own hand. Just grab your own hand. But Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity to come to your house. Thank you that you're home when we show up. Father, we thank you for what's getting ready to happen, what's already happened, and what's currently happening. We declare like David declared, the Lord is our shepherd. Not we haven't wanted, although that's true, 
not we do not want, although that's true, but the Lord is our shepherd based on what you've already done, coupled with what you're currently doing. We declare like David declared about our future, we shall not want. So Father, have your way in this place today. Deliver today, set free today, heal today, encourage today, strengthen today, motivate today, save today. Give confirmation and encouragement, clarity today. Educate today, mature today. Father, don't let anybody leave the same way they showed up or logged on, but let everybody leave better, stronger, and wiser for having been here today. Your will be done in this service. Give everybody everything they seek and then everybody everything we didn't even know we needed. Let us leave better as a result of being here today. In the name to which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, in the name of Jesus, somebody shout amen. And come on, give God a big praise right here. You know, somebody has gone all week. First of all, I don't know what that was on Thursday going into Friday, falling out the sky all crazy like that. But I thank God it cleared up and we're here today. And so because of that, that alone, you ought to thank God that you made it, that you're here safely. But somebody has gone all week and nobody has smiled at them, nobody hugged them, nobody just let them know it was good to see them. I don't ever want people to come to church and get ignored at church. I don't ever want people to come to church and not feel the love of God and not feel embraced and not feel valued. Will you go and find three people, shake their hand real big or give them a good Christian hug and tell them, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you today. I'm glad to see you. A good Christian hug. If you're online, worship me with us online and you have the ability to comment, just put in the comments. I'm glad to see you guys on here. I'm glad to be worshiping online. It's good to be here online with you today. Say hi to somebody, even online. Somebody hasn't had a handshake all week. A hug all week. And some people, their joy was affected this week. Their peace was affected this week. Some people, your happiness was affected this week. But I came to tell you that today, God's going to give it all back to you. Today, you're going to get your joy back. Today, you're going to get your peace back. Today, you're going to get your happiness back. But it starts with you declaring it. You got to say it. You got to put your hand on yourself and say, I'm going to get it back. You say that. Talk about your joy. Say it. Your peace, what? I'm gonna get all of my joy, all of my peace. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm gonna get it. All right, y'all sit down. I'm gonna get it. Would you help me thank God and celebrate Pastor Tamara Saunders as she comes at this time? Good morning. God bless you. Happy Sunday, everybody. Hope City Church of Colorado Performing Arts Ministry invites you to attend our very first Easter production titled Reflections, Echoes of the Cross. This is a live Broadway style production featuring live music, dance, visual effects, amazing lighting, and the greatest story ever told, the death and the resurrection of the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can we praise the Lord? Come and experience this free Easter production on Friday, March 29th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, March 30th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. right here at Gateway High School in the auditorium. And then also please make note of our special Resurrection Sunday morning service times. That is March the 31st. Uh, we have three services, 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. So please Please invite your friends and family to join you for our very special Resurrection Easter Sunday morning service times. Mark your calendars. We are so excited. Mark your calendars and plan to attend our very first anniversary celebration gala dinner. We are so excited. Can you believe it's been one year since we've been uh, born? <laughs> 
we are going to be celebrating on Sunday, April the 21st at 6 p.m. This event will be held at the Hyatt Regency Aurora Denver Conference Center and features a three-course plate at dinner. This event will be hosted by actor-comedian Flex Alexander with a live concert by Shawnee Wilson and DJ Jeb will be playing music to keep the party going all night long. Tickets are $85 and they include parking. Get your tickets now on our website at hopecitycolorado.com. You can click on the gala celebration banner or you can go to the foyer and purchase your ticket at the gala ticket table after service today. The Winter Circle Support Group, hosted by Pastor Dave Whitmore, they meet every Monday evening at 6 p.m. And tomorrow's meeting is at the Sec Central Recreation Center, which is located at 18150 East Vassar Place. This is a Bible-based support group that focuses on providing tools needed to help you to continue to overcome and have victory over any cycles or habits that are keeping you from being God's best. And for those that are unable to attend in person, they do have a Zoom option available, and you can join the Winter Circle Support Group via the Church Center app uh, to get that Zoom link, or you can stop by the information desk in the foyer. They'd be happy to give you that Zoom link as well. If you or anyone you know has a VA disability question or would like assistance to file a VA disability claim, please contact the church office and schedule a me meeting with Minister Cynthia Francis. Hope City, we partnered with the Caring and Sharing Food Pantry, so if you or anyone you know is in food in need of food or any other resources, you can contact the church church office at 303-361-7007. And if you'd like to become a member of this amazing church, there are two ways you can do that. You can go to our website, which is hopecitycolorado.com. You can click on membership there, or you can go out to the membership table after service, build a membership card there, and then they will let you know when our next new members orientation class is. And we're always so excited about our two service time options every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., and it's always our pleasure to invite you to our pre-service receptions, which begin about 30 minutes prior to each service. So please invite your friends and family to come a little early, join you in the foyer for some hospitality and fellowship, and then come on into service. And our prayer teams, they're available every Sunday morning to pray with you after each service. They would love to touch and agree with you in prayer. You can meet them out in the foyer. Also, you can uh, always submit a prayer request online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, our intercessor are praying over those prayer needs or also you can join them every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. for Hope City Prayer Circle Live which is on Facebook and stay connected to our website hopecitycolorado.com uh, Facebook and our Instagram pages throughout the week we're going to be updating those with lots of information we have so many things going on in March and April, April so you're going to want to stay connected also check out our social media and share today's live stream we're streaming like right now we're streaming streaming live to our Facebook page, we're streaming live to our YouTube channel, and we're streaming live uh, to our website right now. You know, there are many ways that you can sow into Hope City, and during the offering portion of today's service, one of our amazing ushers would love to give you an offering envelope. Also, there's a free app in your app store that I like to use, and many of you like to use. Um, it's called Givelify, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. You download it one time, you set it up that one time, and then you're able to sow into the church um, throughout the week. Also, we do have an official Venmo and an official Cash App. Um, also, you can always uh, use the square link on our website or you can mail that contribution in. Just make sure you're mailing it into our mailing address. It's always our pleasure to welcome our first time guest. Uh, if it's your first time streaming with us, we just wanted to say welcome and thank you and just send us a quick email to info at hopecitycolorado.com so we can stay in contact with you. But if you would help me welcome our first time in-person guest. Will you help me welcome Mr. Burke Buckham, <laughs> Annette Moore, Autumn Pham, Lua Asnaga, uh, Rebecca Kidd, and Marcus Moore, and Velma Brooks from Winter Hills, California. 
If it's your first time and I didn't say your name, it's only because I didn't get a first time guest card from you. But you can still go out into the foyer after service. You can fill out that first time guest card. They would be happy to give you a first time guest gift and it'll give us an opportunity to welcome you in a more personal way this week. But all my Hope City family, help me thank God one more time from all of our first time guests. God bless you this morning. Who's from Windsor Hills? Oh, yeah. Did they tell you already I was born and raised in Windsor Hills? I lived right there. I got to tell everybody this story. Y'all just hang on a minute. Let me tell you something real fast. You know Windsor Hills Elementary School? I went there fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. You walk out the front of school. You walk down the street. On the right-hand side, there's a church. Cross the street. So you cross over Northridge. There's the first house on the corner. The second house, I was born and raised in that house. And my mom still lives there with her new husband. (laughs) No, my mom and dad were married almost 50 years. And my father passed away in 2020. And then my mom mourned for a period of time. And then, why y'all? And then decided that it's a new season. And, um, but in fact, in fact, my mom and, and her husband, Carl, He's a man. He's a phenomenal guy. I said, look, you, I don't know how you did this twice. Because my dad was absolutely phenomenal. And then she married somebody phenomenal. I said, you need to come and talk to some of the ladies at church that keep picking the wrong man. And show them how to do it. And for ladies, and and here's a very serious, I'm I'm very serious what I'm about to say. For ladies who have, you know, you've lost your husband. And uh, you've been grieving and mourning. Give it time. Give it time. But can I tell you that God does have a next season for you? And if you want it, now you don't have to want it either. Because I know some ladies are like, baby, look at here. I ain't about to let nobody else drive me crazy. He drove me nuts. And so you may, you may, be, you may decide that that was it. That was all you could take. I'm done. Not again. But if you decided I'll try it again, then God will give you the desires of your heart. And so, anyway, he's a phenomenal guy. Um, his name is Carl, and his dad's name was Carl. And I said, oh, so you're Carl's junior. And so he said, um, yeah, I guess so. So anyway, uh, they'll be here. Um, the weekend Bishop Owens is here on April the 7th. They'll be here with some other family and then some other people flying in from out of town. So it's going to be awesome. But welcome, 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 welcome. I'm glad to see you here, and I'm glad you came. You're sitting with my folks. So I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you here. Um, the ushers who are phenomenal have these tickets that we want to give you. Um, they're just tools to advertise. They're tools to remind you, um, something to keep in your hand and stay with you. These tickets on one side have the uh, announcement for the play, the play that's coming up, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And then on the other side have all the information for the upcoming one-year anniversary. I want everybody to take at least one, but here's the thing. If you're looking to invite someone, but you don't really have the words to say, you don't know how to do it, or you do have the words to say, you do know how to do it, you just want to make it easier, or you want to give them a reminder, take as many as you need. If you want some, raise your hand. The ushers will put them in your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The ushers will put them in your hand. Take as many as you want, as many as you need to pass them out, hand them out. Now, don't get in trouble putting them on cars at your job and all that kind of stuff. And they call up to the church asking who did it. I'm going to say, I don't know nothing about that. So uh, to make sure you do it legally, but give it to a friend, a family member. Um, take a picture of it and post it on your social media. Use it to uh, advertise and to talk about the play. We're giving you so many options to bring people to church so that they may be saved, encouraged, comforted, strengthened, and that they may find hope in themselves. What God does to you, he also plans to do through you. So God will give you hope to give hope through you. He'll give you joy to give hope to give joy through you. So the play coming up, our first ever uh, resurrection play, it's free, is on Friday, March 29th, right here, right here at 7 o'clock p.m. And then again on Saturday, twice, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. All of those times are right here. I did get a chance to see a clip of one of the rehearsals where... Uh, Peter is walking on water and he begins to sink and Jesus pulls him up out of the water. It is phenomenal how they've done this. Phenomenal how they've pulled it off. The creative genius of Pastor Chris Ford and what he's done with this drama ministry is just absolutely priceless. 
and I'll talk more about it as we get closer to it, but I thank God for every actor, every actress, every tech person, everybody behind the scenes, every volunteer, Elder Eric Scott who is involved, and everybody that's doing everything, I thank God for each and every one of you, is going to definitely be a memorable tool to connect people to Jesus Christ. And so take one of these and invite them to come out to the play. And then on the reverse side of it, we have the announcement for our first year anniversary that I am so excited about on April the 7th. So next Sunday is Palm Sunday and then the Easter play and then Resurrection Sunday. And don't forget, as Pastor Tamara said, on Resurrection Sunday, that's the last Sunday of the month, we have three services, 8, 9, 30, 11, 30, 8, 9, 30, 11, 30. If you are trying to avoid the crowds, come to 8 o'clock. If you love crowds, come to 930. If you love crowds that know how to party, come to 1130. So I'm giving it to you right there. If you just want to get in and you just look, girl, just give me something cute so I can go home 8 o'clock. Come to 8 o'clock. If you want to see people and hug people and have a good time, come to 930. But boy, if you want to drop it like it's lukewarm, lukewarm room temperature, because it's still a church, calm down then come to the 1130 service. So that's how you decipher that. 8, 9, 30, 11, 30, 11, 30. Uh, The day gets progressively more spiritually violent as it goes on. So 8, 9, 30, and 11, 30. But then after that, on April the 7th, uh, Bishop Alfred Owens will be here with us. And I don't know if you know who that is, but you need to Google. For years, Bishop Owens was the dean of the African-American College of Bishops. Uh, For years, he was a professor at Howard University. Uh, for years, up until his retirement, had the largest church in Washington, D.C., served on multiple panels all across the nation. And if you say the name Bishop Owens, everybody lights up uh, in the, in the uh, leadership of the church. And so I'm honored and excited to have him here with us. Pastor Steve Lawrence, that's where he came from, and Serge was there with us. And the list goes on and on. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Morette Brown Clark. Uh, Morette Brown, she was the children's ministry Uh, the children's minister of music when I was the drummer there and so I could go on and on about the the people that have come out of his church but I'm excited to have him here with us and then on April the 14th uh, Bishop Marvin Winans will be here with us on April the 14th if you've never heard the last name Winans I I mean I don't even know what to tell you right now it seems like everybody at least heard why and then don't get them confused with the Wayans that that's not the Wayans it's the wine. Somebody said the other day, I love the wine. I love BB and Cece and Keenan Ivory and Damon and it's not the same family. So uh, Bishop Marvin Wine, who was uh, the lead singer of the brothers, the four brothers, he will be here with us on April the 14th. And then on April the 21st, Bishop Paul Morton will be here with us. And then after that, we are going to celebrate like only Hope City can. We're going to celebrate at the Hyatt Aurora Denver Conference Center at 6 p.m. I'm excited about the live music. I'm excited about the concert that Shanice is giving. Now, we've had a month-long, six weeks straight of praise and worship. Shanice is not coming to do praise and worship. Shanice is coming to do her music. It is going to be a concert. It is going, there's going to be a dance floor. We are going to party. We are going to dance because I believe you can be saved and enjoy your life. Don't look like y'all ain't trying to see who's playing to the soil dove next. You're looking at me like, I don't know about all that. Stop it. So, Shanice is doing a concert. You did, what did she sing? I like your smile. Y'all know that song? And so, uh, she's doing a concert. Her husband, Flex Alexander, he's hosting the entire event. Um, Cliff was just in Los Angeles because the NAACP had the, the, award, the awards dinner. And Cliff was playing for Shanice. Uh, for the NAACP Awards Dinner. We were all at the church together that we started in California. Cliff was our band director. Shanice was one of our uh, praise team members. Flex sang in the uh, men's, in men's chorus. And so we go way, 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 way back. And then DJ Jeff, you probably saw him on the Today Show. He's had a couple of videos that just went absolutely viral. He's going to be our DJ there uh, at the Aurora Denver Conference Center at the Hyatt. So, Your tickets include all of this incredible entertainment plus a three-course plated dinner, um, the salad. You have to choose between 
the chicken and the salmon and oh gosh they have all of those details on the site or out in the foyer and then a wonderful dessert and then the parking is included so you don't have to worry about parking and it's all of those things $85 is semi-formal when somebody asked me the other day what is semi-formal I said church clothes so just wear your church clothes um, at 6 p.m. to that event but get your ticket this is for us now there are a lot of people who have told me I'm coming in to that party I'm coming into that celebration I want us to celebrate with us. This is for our family. And that goes for the entire month of April. I don't want anybody to out-celebrate us when it's our celebration. And so make sure you get your ticket and you are a part of that. Let's worship God in our tithe and our offering. I want to read something to you in Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17 verse 24. Because I want to show you out of the scripture how God will bless you to be a blessing. You hear me say it all the time. You're blessed to be a blessing. But check out what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. When they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher, capital T on teacher, they're talking about Jesus, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, yes. And when he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Now watch verse 27. Nevertheless, nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. It is not coincidence that Peter was a fisherman. So Jesus says, do what you do naturally. Do what you're gifted at. You will get paid by doing what you do naturally. You'll get paid by doing what you're gifted at, what you're good at. As you get paid, Peter, take that money and bring it back to the church interesting for me and you Jesus don't need nobody's money why would he say that to push forward my mission to push forward the vision to push forward the ministry so this money that you give is the foundation that will be used to drive everything forward you know it's interesting that Jesus says so we don't offend them can't help but wonder if it is offensive that God will bless you and you still not give back to God. That God would bless you and it's still hard to just give him a back, a piece of what he's given to you. So the Bible says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. It's just a piece. Every time I'm financially increased and blessed, God says, just take a piece of that tithe, 10%. Take 10% of that and give it back to the house. He says, see if I don't open up the windows of heaven, pour you out blessing, you don't even have enough room to receive. I'll rebuke the seed stealer for your sake. One scripture says that a man's gift makes room for him. That's not your talent. That's your seed being sown. So as you give today, I want you to recognize two things. You only have what you have because God gave it to you. If it were left up to the devil, you'd be broke, busted, and disgusted. The devil don't want you to have nothing. I always laugh. People say, uh, you know, God will speak to them to give and they'll say, the devil is a lie. The devil would never tell you to give anything in church. He would never tell you to give to God. Because the enemy knows, the devil knows, the surest investment you can ever make is not the lottery, is not a raffle. The surest investment you can ever make is paying your tithe and giving an offering. So I want you to, one, recognize that whatever I give, I'm just giving back to God a piece of what he's given to me. I give to him because he first gave to me. The second thing is, when you give, Jesus says, give it for me and you. When you give, it is designed to push forward the mission and the vision of the church. And God will do for you what you can't even do for yourself. When you're ready to give, would you raise that gift high unto the Lord? It's worship. It's between you and Jesus. Why were the wise men wise? Because when they showed up in the presence of Jesus Christ, they all had a gift in their hand. Some had gold, some had frankincense, some had myrrh, but everybody has something. And so it's very personal. It's very personal, but it is worship. And so when you're ready to give, raise that gift high unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow back to you what you've sown into us. For the opportunity to enter into the cycle of blessing. 
We are blessed to be a blessing. Thank you for where this money has come from. Thank you for the job, for the income, for the return, for whatever it has, has birthed this. We thank you for the seed that you've, that you've planted in our lives. Now we take that seed and we give back to you a piece of that seed, knowing that we're blessed to be a blessing and that there's more where that came from. Now, Father, take this seed and let it be a blessing to our church. Let it be a blessing to the mission and the vision that you bestowed upon our church. And as a result of our obedience, let the promises that we read about in your word be reality in our lives. Help us to walk in favor. Help us to walk in abundance. Help us to walk in miracles. Bless us, Father, spiritually. Bless us naturally, emotionally. And, Father, connect this seed to rewards that we read about in your word. Your will be done. Your purpose be fulfilled. Your favor be upon us. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. You can stay right where you are. The ushers are going to serve you at this time. But would you help me celebrate this awesome, this amazing worship team as they come back at this time. Hallelujah. Can somebody clap those hands for Jesus? Come on. Family, let's clap our hands for Jesus. Everybody, if you got two hands, if you could just clap for the king, it's going to mean so much. You know, my, I'm, I'm personally excited about the Hope City Church. It's an infant church, and so we're growing by leaps and bounds. How many people would agree? Would you agree? If you agree, nod your head and clap your hands again. So there's a certain amount of education that comes when you're a baby church because we want everybody to grow. Nobody is left behind. So there's a word that's often used in church. The word is glory. So sometimes you say, well, I'm going to glory. And then somebody turn around and say, give them glory. So you're trying to figure out, well, which, which one is it? Well, in the Bible, the word glory has several interpretations. Two of them are Hebrew, one of them are Greek. But the one I'm getting ready to speak about today is the one that's called Kabod, which speaks of the weight and authority of God that's released in the life of a believer when they go through their affliction and test with a healthy attitude. So in other words, you can't give God glory if you don't know how to go through a test and celebrate in the middle of a test. I can't get no help. Is there anybody that know how to celebrate? And as the pastor says, don't wait till the battle is over. But we shout now because we know the end result is that we, that we will win. This, this song said there will be glory after this. Now everybody got a different this. How many people got a this, something that you're walking through, something that you're going through, some petition that you wave your hand and you say, I got a this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a this, but I promise to give God praise after my this. I promise to clap my hands after my this, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with all the glory that shall be revealed in us. Come on, somebody say, I thank God. I thank God for my this. I thank God for my, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. No, I can't hear y'all. I can't be you say, neighbor. I can't hear you say, neighbor. There will be glory after my this. If you believe it, I need to bow your hands.
don't get any better than that. I don't know. We need to start charging tickets to come to church. <laughs> First 25 saints get in free. I thank God, Pastor Steve Lawrence and that incredible worship team and this incredible band. I warned everybody. I said, when Bishop Owens comes and Marvin Winans comes and Bishop Morton comes, they can't have none of y'all. I expect to see everybody still here when they leave because we have a five-star top-notch and I thank God for it. I want to pray for Pastor Dave Whitmore. Uh, I got a phone call uh, a couple days ago that he had gone to his doctor's appointment and the doctor had taken x-rays of his back and did not like what he saw and sent him to emergency, um, to the emergency room. And I called him the moment I heard that I called him and we prayed and they said that they were sending him into emergency surgery for his back. But thanks be to God that when the day ended, they did not perform any surgery. They sent him back home. They sent him back home with some medication and they said, well, we might need to do surgery, but we'll do it in a few weeks. But how many of you know the same God that postponed it can cancel it all together? I said, how many of you know the same God that postponed it can cancel it all together? And so, Father, we thank you for Pastor Dave Whitmore. He is the head of our prayer ministry. And we thank you for his life. We thank you for his faith. We thank you for the opportunity to come to you on his behalf. We ask in the name of Jesus that you complete the work. Complete the work of healing, Father. Heal his body. Heal his back, his leg. Every infirmity, what they think they saw in, their, in his spine, heal it right now. Work a miracle right now. Let it be a testimony to every doctor, every nurse, everybody involved that God is not just alive and well, but God is still a miracle worker. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you grant a miracle to Pastor Dave Whitmore's body, that you completely turn it around. Let him feel a healing going through his body right now, a complete turnaround and a miracle in his body right now. And we command his body to be thou made well, be thou made whole, and be thou healed in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. And come on, give God a praise right here. You see him every Tuesday night with the prayer team on the prayer circle online as well. And so we are praying for him. Pastor Steve, we hadn't even talked this week, and yet the song they sang, There Will Be Glory After This, is just confirmation of the word that God has given me for you today. Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. So it was that he stayed many days in Joppa with Simon, a tanner. A tanner is a person that makes leather not somebody that makes your skin darker. I want to talk from the subject for the next few moments. The journey to recovery. The journey to recovery. Um, I want to make sure you know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, you're coming out of that. 
Um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not really death. It's the shadow of it. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. I want you to understand that God did not bring you this far just to bring you this far. <laughs> this is a test for your testimony. This is part of the book that tells your life story. So don't ever judge your entire book by the chapter you're currently on. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through, it's going to be okay. We have here both the Hebrew name Tabitha and Greek name Dorcas of a woman who was known as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not only was she a disciple of Jesus Christ, but she was a woman who worked the potential that was placed on the inside of her. She displayed her love by giving to others through the working of her gifts. Let me just say while I'm thinking about it, too many of us are neglecting our God-given gifts and God-given talents that would be a blessing to the people around us if we would just simply operate in them. She was a blessing simply because she did what came natural to her. See, your blessing and your ability to be a blessing is directly connected to what you are naturally good at. I told you earlier that Jesus told Peter, go down and fish. And when you catch the fish, there'll be money in the fish's mouth. See, we're trying to figure out what our calling in is, is in life. Your calling in life starts with what you're naturally good at. What are you good? Everybody that can hear me, whether you're online or in person, everybody in front of me, connected to me today, everybody is good at something. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. Because God does not make regular people. Nothing God does is regular. You do understand this is the same God that took a ball of gas and threw it in the sky. It never fell and he called it the sun. He said, you're going to tell everybody when it's daytime. Let me do it again over here. It hung in the sky and he called it the moon. You do understand he created the heavens and the earth. He created the angels that sing around him. The water, the birds, the fish. Everything God does is great. He did not get average when it came to you. In fact, when it came to you, that's the only thing. Not the birds, not the animals, not the fish. You are the only thing that God said, let us make this one in our image. If there's greatness in the ones that he didn't even say that about, what's inside of you? See, the enemy wants you to think you're just a regular person. But your own life story confirms that you're not a regular person. After all the stuff you come out of, after all the stuff you currently survived, you're not just a conqueror. A conqueror is somebody that ain't never been through anything. A conqueror is somebody that's always had money, always had a job, always had a good relationship, always had a house, always had a good car, always had great credit. That is a conqueror. But the person that has had to fix their credit, get a new job, rebuild their finances, get another car after being repossessed, has faced an eviction and unemployment and broken relationships, and they're still shouting, and they're still praising God, and they're still believing in him, and they still have their joy and their faith and their smile. If the person that ain't never been through nothing is a conqueror, what does that make the person that's been through all of that, and yet they're still standing? That makes you more than a conqueror. Uh, you ought to look at your neighbor and say, I don't know if you know this. But you're sitting next to more than a conqueror. Uh, tell them, I don't know if you know this, but you're sitting next to a miracle. I know you thought I was regular, but let me just introduce myself. I'm a walking testimony. I'm a walking miracle. I'm somebody where the devil meant for evil, but God turned it away, around for my good. I'm somebody that the devil thought he would kill in the 90s and the early 2000s. I'm somebody that's still here in 2024, and even the devil is shocked because after everything he threw my way, he cannot fathom the fact that I still got my praise 
I still got my joy. I still got my hallelujah. And you sitting next to somebody that's been through the storm and the rain, been through the fire, and still don't smell like smoke. You sitting next to somebody that the devil counted out, only to find out the devil knew, never knew how to count in the first place. You sitting next to somebody that shouldn't even be. Is there anybody in the room that knows statistically speaking, you shouldn't even be here right now? Statistically speaking, you should be out your mind. You should be on drugs on alcohol in the cemetery dead and gone you should be in a coma you should be a vegetable you shouldn't even be talking you shouldn't even be here is there anybody in the room that says I defied the odds I made it out of every, everything that reached for me did not reach me and I came to tell you don't act like I'm regular I'm a walking miracle so everybody you're special You're not regular. You're different. You're more than a conqueror. And everybody, you have a gift. You have a talent. You got to walk in and work what you're naturally good at. The Bible says that this woman, Tabitha, this woman was full of good works and full of charitable deeds, which she did. What gifts and talents are you currently sitting on? She did it. She had it and she brought it from the inside of her to the outside of her. No doubt she was one who everyone loved. She was one who everybody benefited from because she enhanced the lives of the people around her. Do you know people's lives ought to be enhanced because you're in it? People's lives ought to be better because they know you. Not stressed out because they know you, but better because they know you. She enhanced the lives of the people around her. She not only enhanced the lives, she encouraged the lives. When's the last time you encouraged somebody? I know you're going through your stuff, but newsflash, everybody going through something. And sometimes your peace comes when you encourage somebody else in spite of what you're dealing with. See, sometimes the devil wants you to just think about what you're going through so you can't speak a word to somebody else. Jesus on the way to the cross was healing people. On the way to the cross was speaking miracles and deliverance. Jesus on the way to the cross was casting out devils. I know you got stuff going on in your life, but you still have an obligation to encourage people when you have the opportunity to encourage people. This woman, Tabitha, not only enhanced the lives of the people around her, but she encouraged the people around her. Not only did she enhance the lives and encourage the lives, but she edified the lives of the people around her. She sold into them. She poured into them. You ought to... You You ought to give back to somebody in such a way that just like somebody poured into you, you need to pour into somebody else. Because what God does to you, he plans to do through you. So she edified the lives of the people around her. Not only did she encourage them, not only did she enhance them, not only did she edify them, but I'm sure somebody in that crowd would say she actually empowered us. She showed us how to do things for ourselves. She showed us how to bring joy. She showed us how to bring peace. When's the last time you showed somebody how to have a better life? Here's a woman now who enhanced the lives of the people around her, edified the lives of the people around her, encouraged the lives of the people around her, and empowered the lives of the people around her. And as if that was not enough, you can guarantee that because the Bible says she was a disciple, she also exalted Jesus all while she was doing it. So she encouraged people, she enhanced people, she edified people, she empowered people, and she exalted Jesus. Not only did she exalt Jesus, but you better believe she exemplified what it meant to be a loving disciple of Jesus Christ. And if you miss it, you'll miss one of your callings in life. You are called in life to enhance somebody else's life, to encourage somebody else's life, to empower somebody else's life, to edify somebody else's life, to exalt Jesus while you're doing it, and to be an example of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ with all of this goodness with all of this charity flowing from this woman who was a disciple of Christ who made the lives of everyone around her better the Bible says of all people Tabitha got sick of all the people around of all the people who could have gotten sick Tabitha got sick and not just not just sick, 
But the Bible says of all the people around, Tabitha got sick and died. Can I just say this while I'm thinking about it? This woman who was a disciple of Jesus Christ, who made tunics and garments for everybody, who was a blessing to the widows, this woman who was known for her generosity and love, who walked in the fullness of her potential, who walked in God's perfect will, who walked in her calling, this woman dying is proof that your title, your gifts, your talents do not save you from the trials of life. It is a misconception to think that when you have Jesus, you don't have any more problems. Let me tell you something. When I have Jesus, I still have problems. But the big difference is this. I don't have them all by myself. In fact, I have battles. But when I have Jesus, the battle's not even mine. The battle is the Lord's. So I can keep moving forward and trust God to be God because I have him as my God. The Bible says that she, she dies. But y'all, check this out. This is the first thing that stands out to me. Did y'all notice that she died? They washed her body. Don't miss it. They put her in the upper room. But did you notice they never prepared or planned for a funeral? They washed her body. They put her in the upper room, but they never made plans for a funeral. Hmm. See, the problem with too many of us is that we have such a negative disposition in life that we will miss out on experiencing miracles that God is setting us up for. Because too many of us, we always assume the worst. Well, it was good while we had her. Well, that was fun. Well, you ever met anybody that the slightest little thing go wrong and they go all the way there? I guess I ain't going to never be nothing. What? Because you didn't get this job? Well, I guess God just don't love me. Why? Because you have to figure out how to budget your money and pay one bill? I guess I just ain't going to ever find anybody. I just ain't going to ever have a mate. Why? Because you broke up with one person? You ever met that person? Not you. I'm saying, have you ever met that person? She dies. Don't, don't miss it. She dies. I mean, it don't get any more final than death. This side of life. She dies, and nobody says, well, who going to sing the song? Well, who going to call the funeral home? Who going to preach the eulogy? You know, we should do families, friends, and, and neighbors. That's what we should do on the program, three minutes each. Who's going who's gonna to host the event? They washed her. They put her in the upper room. She dies. They don't plan a funeral. And it is in the journey to recovery that we see the fact that, watch this, victory comes in pieces. Don't miss that. Many of us, we're looking for success. Hear me good. It's already happening. You're looking for victory. It's already happening. Pastor, how is it happening when I'm going through this? I'm so glad you asked. Victory comes in pieces. I want you to watch how the enemy will try to attack while God will position you to grow. Why did Tabitha, of all people, why did Tabitha have to die? Let me get to that. Let me say this right here before I forget. Her death brings discovery. And the discovery of the first phase of the journey to recovery, the first phase that I call, write this down, targeting. Tabitha did the most in her circle. She was the most beneficial. She was the most helpful. She was the most productive. She was who the widows depended on. So I want you to watch what happens. The one that meant the most was the one that got targeted. <laughs> uh, Isaac meant the most to Abraham, and therefore Isaac got targeted. I want you to go and kill your son. Fortunately, Abraham didn't have to do it. But the one who he loved the most is the one who got targeted. And if you don't remember anything else, remember this right here. Oftentimes, the thing that means the most to you becomes the target. Ooh, can I say it again? I said oftentimes... The thing that means the most to you 
becomes the target. The enemy will target it in hopes to destroy you. But God will allow it with the goal to prove you, to solidify you, to grow you, to mature you. So pay attention to what comes under attack in your life because chances are it's the thing that means the most in your life. That's the reason why you have to pray over what you possess. The devil will look at you and say, what's feeding you the most? What means the most? Is it your job? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? What is it that means the most to you? And that thing becomes the target. That's the reason why you got to cover in prayer what you love. Who or what is Tabitha in your life? Cover it with prayer. Cover them with prayer. So should it come under attack, you're not planning for the end, but you're planning for a new beginning. Your job may be your Tabitha. Your family might be your Tabitha. Your spouse may be your Tabitha. Your children may be your Tabitha. Your health may be your Tabitha. Your money may be your Tabitha. And whatever it is, it becomes a target. And the target now goes through phase two. Phase one is called targeting. Phase two, your target now goes through what I call testing. The testing phase sometimes looks like the tragedy phase. But it's only a test. Things seem to look worse before they get better just to show you how big God is in your life. Oh, I grew up in Los Angeles, California. They would build skyscrapers downtown, these great big skyscrapers. And I always wonder why they go so far down in the ground before they go so high up in the sky. You want to know why? Because the further down they go, the higher up they can go. L.A. is known for earthquakes. So now when the building is built and the earthquake comes, the building may sway, but it won't fall. You want to know why it won't fall? Because it went down before it went up. And God says, for some of us in the room, you may feel like you're going down and down. And God says, that's because I'm solidifying you. I'm laying foundation for you. I'm making you stronger so that when you get to where I'm taking you, you cannot easily be broken all the way back down. You have to go through a testing. And I want you to keep in mind, those of you that can remember all the way back to school, keep in mind that the teacher does not usually talk during the test. Because the teacher knows that they've already given you all the answers that you need to pass the test. And many of us may say, I'm going through a test, I'm praying, and I ain't hearing nothing. I'm looking for God, and I'm not seeing anything. And God says, because by the time you get to the test, I know I've already given you all the answers you need to make it through the test. You've been taught already. Now you need to apply what you know. And even if all you know is to pray, apply it. Even if all you know is to fast, apply it. Even if all you know is to wait, apply it. Even if all you know is to trust God, apply it. Apply what you can and God will supply what you need. Oh God, help me here. The testing phase now bleeds into phase three. So it's targeting, then it's testing. And then from testing, it goes into phase three. Phase three is what I call talking. So something gets targeted, and that thing that gets targeted gets tested. And now the thing that gets tested gets talked about. Watch what the Bible says. Watch how when Tabitha died, she was targeted. She died. That's the test. Watch how everybody started talking to somebody. The disciples that were in Joppa, they started talking to two men. They sent two men to go and talk to Peter. When Peter got there, the widows started talking to him about Tabitha. They start showing him the tunics. They start showing him the garments. They start talking about how much she meant. They start talking about how wonderful she was. Everybody was talking to somebody. But the Bible does not say that Peter talked back to the widows. The Bible says that while the disciples talked to the men and the men talked to Peter and the widows talked to Peter, the Bible says that Peter put them all out and Peter started talking to God. Oh, it's about to get good in a minute. See, sometimes, let me say this while I'm thinking about it. Sometimes you got to learn how to put people out who ain't helping you. You sitting around crying and I'm believing God for a miracle. You sitting around reminiscing, I'm believing God for what's next. You want to talk about memories and I want to believe God for a miracle. 
And sometimes people don't mean any harm, but their faith is not where you need it to be to get what you need from God. So Peter says, I appreciate what y'all showing me. I thank God for your memories, but it ain't over. And because y'all not going to pray with me, but you're going to sit here and cry all over me, you got to get out. He put them out, and the Bible says, after he put them out, he started talking to God. See, during your testing phase, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. During your testing phase, it is important who you talk to. You can't talk to everybody while you're going through it. Because some people will talk you right out of what you believe in God for. Some people will convince you that the best thing to do is to make lemonade when life has your lemons. But what if I don't like lemons? What if I don't want lemonade? Some people, they don't mean any harm, but they'll get you to get comfortable in a place that's designed to be your testimony. They'll get you to get comfortable. Well, it just is what it is. Well, just make the best of it. Well, just do what you can. The devil is alive. You need some friends around you that say, oh, no, it ain't over until God brings you out of this. This ain't the end of your story. We're not about to sit up and glorify how you're living with high blood pressure. We're not about to sit up and glorify how you're living with diabetes. We're not about to sit up and talk about your heart attack. We're about to say in the name of Jesus, God's getting ready to turn my health around because I got too much ministry in me, too much of an anointing on me, too much of a call in me, too much of a bright future and a bright destiny. I'm not going to live with high blood pressure. I'm not going to live being a diabetic. I'm not going to live with cancer i'm not gonna live with these things and just take it as it is as if this is what i need to settle for my god is a healer my god is a provider my god is a way maker you need some people around you that will cast out the spirit of infirmity the spirit of sickness and the spirit of it matters who you talk to you can't talk to everybody it matters not just who you talk to it matters what you're talking about songwriter says have a little talk with jesus tell him all about your troubles he will hear our faintest cry and answer by and by fill a little prayer we'll turn him know a little fire is burning just a little talk with jesus makes it right watch what starts to happen peter starts to talk to the right person about the right thing and as peter begins to talk it transitions us into our fourth phase. The first phase was targeting. The second one was testing. The third one was talking. But the fourth phase, as Peter began to talk, things began to turn. So the fourth phase is a phase that I call turning. The more Peter talked to God, the more God turned his situation. The more Peter gave it to God, the more God spoke to his situation. I need you to understand that the more you talk, the more your situation turns. Now hear me good, that's both good and bad. Because if you start talking about negative things, your situation gets worse. You start talking about positive things, your situation gets better. My husband is crazy. He's just a little bit crazier today than he was yesterday. I guess I ain't gonna ever have any money. You just a little bit more broke today than you were yesterday. Don't nobody wanna hire me. You going longer and longer without a job. I guess it just is, watch your mouth. The Bible says that death and life are in the power. So Peter says, I got two choices here. I can either pray and talk about something negative or I can pray and believe God for something positive. Hear me good. You prophesy your current circumstance. You are living what you've been talking about. God. So if you want to see something different, you got to say something different. And many of us will say what we're living and wonder why what we're living is not changing. Because it's what's coming out of your mouth that is breathing life into your atmosphere. If I were to blow into a balloon, you don't see the air, but you see the balloon expand. Because what comes out of my mouth affects my situation. The more Peter began to talk, the more the situation began to turn. Because life and death are in the power of your tongue. Watch this, y'all. The Bible then says, ah, I'm getting excited because I know what I'm about to say. The Bible then says, and Peter turning to the body. 
which tells me that there was a period in there that while he was talking to God, he was not facing the body. Sometimes you cannot stare at would you believe in God to change. Because if you stare at what you believe in God to change, it will affect your faith. Because its current situation does not look like what's coming through your prayers. Oh, God, help me here. Sometimes you can't stare at what you're praying for because it doesn't look like what you're believing for. And so many of us, you keep staring at your paycheck. God, when you going to do it? When you going to change it? You staring at your spouse. When you going to fix them? When you going to change them? You staring at your kids? You staring at your doctor's report? You staring at your credit? You got to learn how to walk away from some of that stuff, get in your prayer closet, close your eyes and stare at your future. Oh, it's about to get good. The Bible says he then turned to the body, and when he turned to the body, my brothers, my sisters, he did the craziest thing I've ever seen anybody do. This dude actually spoke to a dead body. He looks at Tabitha. He says, Tabitha, get up. Tabitha, arise, which tells me you got to learn how to talk in the future to your present situation. Tabitha couldn't say anything back. But Peter teaches me that whatever you do, don't let what's silent silence you. Tabitha, you can't say anything back to me. Tabitha, you're not turning. Tabitha, you're not changing. But I'm going to keep speaking until it happens. I'm going to keep declaring it until it gets turned around. Now I feel like preaching, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it might be the same today. But keep praying for it. Keep looking for it. Keep believing for it. Because it might be silent today. Oh, but the widows were just crying. The Bible lets me know that weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. And the Bible says, when Peter looked at her, he said, Tabitha, arise. The Bible says, she opened her eyes. And then the Bible says, she saw Peter. And the Bible says, he stretched out his hand and he lifted her up. Don't read it too fast. She woke up. She sat up. She got up. Let me say it to this side. She woke up. She sat up. She got up. Uh, let me say it up there. She woke up. She sat up. She got up. Now help me preach. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time for you to wake up. The devil want to keep you discouraged. The devil wants to keep you depressed. The devil wants to keep you lonely. But God is still God. God is still a healer. God is still a way maker. Wake up and see your past. Hasn't he already done enough? Hasn't he already brought you out of danger? Has he already brought you out of trials? You got to wake up and see the goodness of the Lord. Don't let your bills blind you. Don't let people blind you. Don't let credit blind you. Don't let anything blind you from remembering and seeing that God is a good God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. And after you wake up, you got to sit up. She changed her posture. She changed her position. And many of us, you've been laying in depression too long. You've been laying in doubt too long. You've been laying in fear too long. But hunt your neighbor and say, neighbor, sit up, baby. Sit up out of depression. Sit up out of fear. Sit up out of anxiety. You've been laying there too long. But in 2024, change your position change your posture and say I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us the Bible says she woke up the Bible says she sat up and then the Bible says she got up I declare the name of Jesus I'm getting up out of this shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor let's get up out of this situation get up out of doubt Get up out of fear. Get up out of depression. Get up out of anxiety. Get up out of loneliness. You got to wake up, open your eyes, and see amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the rest like me. And the Bible says, when she got up, they transitioned to the fifth phase. The fifth phase is the phase that I call triumphing. And I came to tell somebody on the journey to recovery, it ain't over until you get victory. It ain't over until you try.
fire. And the moment Tabitha got up, everybody was reminded that death does not have the final say. And I came to tell somebody in the room, I don't care what the doctor said. The doctor does not have the final say. I don't care what the employer said. The employer does not have the final say. I don't care what your friends said. Your friends don't have the final say. I don't care what the lawyer said. The lawyer does not have the final say. And this story of Tabitha reminds me that it ain't over till so God says it's over. And the Bible says that Peter now stretched out his hand, got her up off the bed, called everybody back in the room and said, meet your testimony. By the way, that's phase six. Phase one was targeting. Phase two was testing. Phase three was talking. Phase four was turning. Phase five was triumphing. But somebody, God says, get ready to enter into phase six. And phase six is testifying. I decree and I declare that the days are coming where you're going to say, look where the Lord has brought me from. Brought me through danger. Brought me through trials. But can I tell y'all what makes me want to shout? The Bible says that it became known throughout all of Joppa. The testimony of Tabitha. But here's what makes me want to shout. Tabitha was dead while it was happening. Tabitha was laying there while it was happening. So she didn't even know all the details to her testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my testimony is so big. I don't even have all the details. All I know is that there was a period where I was out of my mind. There was a period where everything went black. There was a period where I felt dead and gone. But shake your neighbor's hand. Say, but I'm back now, baby. I'm back now. The Bible says that while Tabitha was dead, somebody was praying. Somebody was believing. Somebody was trusting God. That's the reason why you got to guard your friendship circle. Because when it seems like the devil is winning, you need somebody that's going to pray for you. When it seems like all hell is breaking loose, you need somebody that's going to come to your rescue and talk to God. The songwriter said, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took some time and prayed for me. They didn't have no doubt. The Lord would bring me out. I'm so glad somebody prayed for me. Can I get my own testimony? Give an honor to God who's the head of my life. I thank and praise the Lord that there was a period about a year ago when I thought it was over. I'm about to lose my mind. About to go crazy. Laying down in sorrow. Laying down in discouragement. Laying down in depression. But while I blacked out, somebody was praying. Somebody was trusting God. Somebody was believing. And all I can tell you is that love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. I'm sorry, y'all. I know we over time and they lined it up for the 11 o'clock. But I feel like having church now. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm back. I'm back. Back shouting. Back singing. Back worshiping. Back praising. Wait a minute, Tabitha. If you made tunics before you went through this and everybody talked about your tunics before you went through this what you gonna make now what you gonna do now now that you've been through what you've been through look at your neighbor and say neighbor I was good before my test I was good before my trial but now that I come out wait till you see what I do now you ain't seen nothing yet I was blessing you before I had a story before I had a testimony before I had a trial but now on the other side wait till you see how God does it look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's going to be alright and the Bible says that all of Joppa heard of the story and people begin to believe in the Lord somebody is going to give their life to God when you come out on the other side somebody is going to trust Jesus when you survive and the testimony looks like this let me tell you this that I'm a 
let you go. I've been restored. I've been renewed. I've been refreshed. I've been reset. I said I've been restored. I've been renewed. I've been refreshed. I've been reset. I thank God for the targeting. I thank God for the testing. I thank God for the talking. I thank God for the turning. I thank God for the triumph. But I got a testimony. And during the anniversary, get ready to be restored. Get ready to be renewed. Get ready to be refreshed. Get ready to be reset. Because let me tell you what the devil does not want you to know. You are on the in the middle of your journey to recovery. And I don't know what phase you're in right now. Maybe you're already, you've been in the testing phase. And now God is trying to highlight the talking phase. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Maybe you're in the talking phase and you need to change your conversation. Because let me tell you, what you talk about affects what you're talking about. And as you talk, things begin to turn. And if you talk right, God will usher you into the triumphing phase. And after that phase, it's the testimony phase. You go through to bring somebody else through. Oh, God, help me. Grab the hand of the person standing next to you. Father, we honor you. We magnify, we adore, we appreciate you. Thank you for the opportunity to see what happened with Tabitha, Peter, the widows, all the disciples and to use that to grow us in our knowledge of how you function and operate and even what the devil would mean for evil. Help us to have clear knowledge, revelation of what's being targeted in our lives. Oh, he's attacking my job because he's trying to tear up my family. So Father, help us to cover in prayer the target. Help us to know that sometimes that target goes through a testing, but it's only a test. And as we're going through the testing of our target, guard our mouths and help us to watch what we talk about. As we go through the testing of the target and we're talking, help us to see that it's turning. And as it's turning, don't let us wait till the battle is over. Let us shout right now because it's ending in triumph. And on the other side of the triumph is our testifying. Somebody will know what we made it out of. Now, Father, we ask that you take us from this place, but whatever you do, don't take us from your presence. Keep us and cover us and bring us back at the appointed time. Ready to praise, worship, and honor you together. In Jesus' mighty name.